Hey, what's going on? You know who it is. You know what it is. All right, you guys. Peep game, man. You know, I want to talk about uh, this whole thing with the media as far as boxing goes versus people in the media that cover boxing. And I'm going to tell you my experience so far as me being, you know, like a guy that's interviewing fighters and dealing with these people in these boxing gyms and shit. Okay, I listen to Blood's video, I listen to Seven uh, 7A's video, I listen to Ticket's video, I listen to Age Money's video in regards, you know, to the subject of, you know, boxers and shit. Now, as far as Adrian Broner go, what he said to that nest dude, I don't know the cat, I don't even know who the hell he is and what, you know, publication he worked for. But at the end of the day, Adrian Broner... I don't know if it was necessary to call him a bitch ass nigga and stuff. Because at the end of the day, Adrian Broner got to understand that some of these dudes might be about that life too. You know, and I was hearing Age Money talking about, you know, YouTube reporters and what whatever the case may be. Now, keep in mind, some of these so-called YouTube reporters might be from the streets too. They might be from somewhere else they might not necessarily be from ohio and if they is they might be from dayton or some somewhere else or they might be from florida or they might be from the bay they might could be from la you don't know what their background is and you call somebody a bitch ass nigga and you only five feet six at best what if one of these niggas grab you by your neck and lift you up see here's the thing you're a boxer you're a professional boxer you know, there ain't no referee, you know, on the streets. There ain't no rules that you got to play by. Now, if one of these dudes just take off on Adrian Broner, let's just say he pick Adrian Broner up and body slam him and just start welling on him on the ground, then, then what? So Adrian Broner need to watch how he come at people. Now, I know it's always going to be a slippery slope between, you know, media people and reporters. It's, it just always have been and it always will be. Because where you have reporters that have good intentions for some of these fighters, such as me, Fred, and, and Dante, you have the dudes that, you know, looking for the next big story and shit. And I'm going to tell you something. The boxing media, a lot of these dudes, I don't think this is like their full-time job. See, the difference between ESPN reporters and, uh, you know, boxing reporters ESPN reporters have a st steady paycheck coming from ESPN. So, to a certain degree, they don't have to worry about their job security unless they just do something just so out of pocket. You know, and most of the time, those boxing promotion companies going to be, you know, begging them to take their press credentials. Where you got, you know, the regular dudes, they got to kiss a lot of ass and brown nose and shit. To get press credential. See me myself, I feel like this. I'm not gonna fucking compromise myself to to the degree where I feel like, damn, I'm just selling out just to you know get into these boxing matches and shit. Now, probably if I was patient enough, I probably could get press credentials for Andre Ward, Sergey Kovalev too. But no, I'm gonna buy a ticket because I know that that's more secure for me than. I pay for my own ticket, and I don't have to go through the shenanigans that a lot of these reporters go through because these dudes brown nose to the extreme. You know, you can't be yourself. You gotta, you you gotta kiss too much ass, and then these dudes, they don't want to ask these dudes tough questions and shit. Now I understand it's just you know I know it's gonna be times where you know these guys don't feel like talking to the media. That's understandable. And I know people don't want to get all deep into these dudes' personal life. Me neither. I really just want to ask some boxing questions. And shit re retained in the boxing. Now, as far as the racist emails go, I'm not going to let, let, you know, let off on that. I'm not going to let that go because they need to answer for that. They need to answer questions behind what was up with that shit. And while you got some of these dudes from other media outlets, oh, you know, trying to answer on behalf of them. Nah, man, shut the fuck up, dude. Ain't nobody talking to you. Stay out my mix. 
You know, I'm talking to these dudes. Because that's what it come down to. These dudes want these fucking press credentials. And they'll do anything to get them. Or to keep them. They want to keep being invited to these press conference for these uh, fighters. You know, eating those whack ass sandwiches and shit. You know, those whack ass buffets and shit. They want to keep coming to those and shit. You know? So, I got my, my feel of, you know, being at one of my first... uh press conference where I was actually a member of the press and not coming as a fan so I've seen the politics that go into that shit like I said keep in mind most of these dudes that you know write for these magazines like Fight Hype and Fight Hub and what's the other one the boxing scene and shit I don't think this is their full time job I think this is something they do on the side like I said the ESPN Fox News shit and, you know, the other shit, you know, MSNBC Sports, they're getting a steady paycheck. So that's different. So they kind of can, you know, get all big and bad and shit because they got the protection of the perspective network that they work for. Where these dudes, you never know. You see what happened to Fred with Barbershop Conversation. They kicked him out of a press conference for basically doing his job. You know, as long as you, like, brown knows and you good with him. But the moment you challenge them on something, then, hey, all of a sudden it's a problem. You know? So, at the end of the day, these dudes, it, it's, it's a two, it, it, it's a two-way street. You know, it, it's just a real slippery slope. At the end of the day, man, I'm not going to be disrespected by none of these damn boxers and shit. You know, and I'm going to show them as much respect as possible when I interview these dudes. I'm not going to sit up there and make fun of them and shit. I have to understand that. Just like, you know, when I interviewed, excuse me, interviewed Amir Khan. Everybody knows I made fun of Amir Khan. But at the end of the day, I can't be so disrespectful to the point to where the dude not going to talk to me. You know, but then at the same time. I'm not going to be afraid to ask him tough questions either. Because that's just how it works. You know, and these these boxers, you got to understand, they're, they hold grudges. They're petty. They hold grudges. So as long as you up under their thumb and shit, yeah, they love you. You know, even though I'm a fan of Virgil Hunter... And I appreciate Virgil Hunter letting me in his gym. I mean, if, if it get to the point to where I got to ask him some tough questions, I'm going to ask him. You know, um, I'm trying to set up an interview with him like when he get back in town. So, I mean, that's just how it works, man. That's just how it works. It's just going to always be like a fine line between the media and, you know, and, and, and boxers or guys that play sports. You know, it's a game that you have to play. You know, if you want to stick around or be relevant or, you know, get perks from being, you know, affiliated with some of these uh, promotional companies. They have their favorites, guys that they fuck with, guys that they don't want to fuck with. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if. Do they completely know about me? But then they heard about me because, you know, people responded to, uh, you know, an interview I did. So I don't know if, the, you know, these guys are watching my channel and plotting on me and shit or, you know, blackballing me as I speak. So I, I don't know. And that's fine with me. Because if I do get blackballed, then that's really going to open up the door for me to be myself. You guys seen the questions I asked Eddie Hearn when I seen him? Because those were questions that needed to be asked. And if I see D John David Jackson, which I'm pretty all but sure I'm going to run into John David Jackson, you know, at the press conference, you know, for Ward, excuse me, at the wing in for Ward Kovalov too. I'm going to ask him, why are you continuing to work with a dude who's a proven racist? And it's none of this, oh, a suspect. No, Sergey Kovalov is a proven racist so yeah I just wanted to bring that to y'all uh, uh, attention this shit is a dirty game 
And I'm giving y'all the real as a dude that y'all actually seen a dude like just start off talking boxing to where I ended up meeting all these boxers and talking to them and, you know, and like I said before, I went back and forth about do I want to explore this thing because I'm seeing some shit behind the scenes that I don't like that, you know, I don't really want to go into detail about it because, you know, like I said, some of these, you know, with these boxers, some of these boxers, they very finicky. Some of them will talk to you. Some of them don't want to talk to you. Some of them can't wait to talk to you. Some of them had that ad attitude that look like, man, get the fuck out of my face. So it is what it is, y'all. But, um, yeah, man, getting back to the shit with like Adrian Broner before I end this video, man. A lot of these boxers got to understand, man. It, respect goes both ways, man. You can't be walking up just or calling somebody out their name because you, you know, just because you think you can. Because like I said, you don't know the background of the dudes you talking to. Now, what if that dude, like I said, would have socked Adrian Broner? And then a Adrian Broner, and then let's just say he would have knocked Adrian Broner out. Then Adrian Broner would have been humiliated. Or let's just say the dude would have picked Adrian Broner up by his neck and body slammed him. Adrian Broner would have been humiliated. Like I keep saying, it's the difference between a boxing match and a street fight. In a, in a street fight, there ain't no rules. Anything goes. You don't have a ref in a street fight. Keep that in mind. You know what I'm saying? Look what happened to stupid ass Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber had took a couple of boxing lessons with Floyd Mayweather, and then he was feeling himself. I guess he forgot that he not really from the streets. He just some punk from Canada. And then you see when he tried to, you know, when he tried to run up on that black dude and he hit that black dude and that black dude like picked his ass up and had him on the ground and was finna like probably do something real, real bad to, um, to Justin Bieber. Then, you know, he learned the lesson because I hope he don't try that again. You know, he, he dodged the bullet that time. So, yeah, man, I, I just is putting that out there, man. Let me know what you guys think.